Hi everybody, it's Alex here and it's night time so I hope the lighting is not too bad in this room. I am going to start doing a little set of videos um, around a question that I quite often get asked. I actually got asked by um, a good friend of mine that I've known for years. Hi Jess, because I'm going to link you to this video. I told you I'd send you an email but I'm actually going to do the, these videos for you so everyone can know because uh, I get asked this question all the time. The question is... Um, you know, would you recommend coming and living overseas? Would you recommend giving up everything and getting up and doing like a, a gap-ish sort of year? I mean, I graduated college before I came over here. You know, I went to went went to college and did all that. Um, you know, got got my my certificates and everything like that before I came over here. Um, basically, would I recommend doing what I did for other people? to other people and the answer to that question is yes but I want to give you some really in-depth reasons why and some tips and so I mean, I'm not even finished I'm not even home yet but you know I can't rave about this experience um, more so these are going to be really laid back videos I have nothing in my you know my little trusty book about them I am literally wearing you know like tracksuit pants here see you know no, nothing exciting going on. Um, just the makeup from today. It is quarter to ten at night. You know, very laid back, just talking video. So if you're not interested in that, not as interested in travelling, well, I don't know. Turn the video off now. Um, okay, so basically, I always get asked the question as to whether I think it's beneficial to come over and do a year away. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about my story. I was in a job that I didn't like. Um, a job that paid very good money, but morally I didn't like. Um, so within a matter of two weeks, I decided that I couldn't stay my job anymore. And then I went to my parents and I said, okay, I'm going to quit. And I basically, I'd planned to travel for three months doing England and Europe for three months in the August, September, October period um, of 2010. So I'd, I'd saved, you know, a lot of money already. I'd saved enough money from a travel. So, good old dad turns around and goes, well, what are you going to do then? Because I, I come from a small town and there was no way I was going to get um, another substantial, well, very rarely, you know, very rare that I was going to get another job that was going to sustain me financially. Um, yeah. So, I went away and I had a thought, think about it, and I was like, what if I go au pair? What if I go nanny? So then I went to my parents with that one and they, I think they were a little bit shocked but in a matter of two weeks I'd quit my job, I got my visa and I was on a plane. <laughs> Getting to the airport and the realisation I think of myself and for my, my parents and my brother that I was actually leaving, you know, for an extended period of time. Um, yeah, the realisation hit us like a bus but, well, I think it did anyway, it hit me like a bus. Um, yeah, so basically that was really bizarre for me because I'm not spontaneous. I like to have things planned out. I like to have, you know, a good idea of what I'm doing, where I'm going, who I'm seeing. Um, I, you know, like a bit of responsibility. I was planning on saving for a home and this and that and the other. And then all of a sudden I'm on a plane for 23 and a half hours flying around the world. <laughs> Oh, it was a good flight. The lady and I got drunk a lot of wine on that flight. <laughs> um, lady next to me, just some random woman that I was sitting with, we drank a lot of wine on that flight. Anyway, so basically, in that two weeks, I'd gotten online, I'd worked out some families. Originally, I wanted to go to Germany, but I couldn't get into Germany due to language restrictions. Um, so then I decided on the UK because the visa is so easy to get. That's really, and I, I hate to say it, but that's really the only reason why I ended up in the UK. Um, then was the matter of finding an au pair family. Now, as an au pair, you earn 50 pounds a week. That's like the minimum. Now, you live in someone's house, they pay for your food, your rent, everything. Basically, that money is for you to spend on, you know, things that you want. So, I didn't have to want for anything. Maybe, you know, I spent it on soap, I spent it on shampoo and conditioner, um, and anything else I wanted. Like, I have a bunch of dresses back here which I can credit to au pairing, <laughs> to au pairing money. Um, so, £50 a week is, is pittance, but you don't have to pay rent to pay for anything else like that. 
Unless obviously, you know, I mean, if you're going to do that, obviously they have to pay more, but technically they, they pay you a certain amount and then they take your food and your board out of that. So that's how it was explained to me. Um, so basically I was on there looking for families. It came down to two families, one in Melksham, which is right down the bottom of the country in the middle of nowhere, and then one in Scotland. Um, they both had two young boys. The one in Melksham were twins and the one up in Scotland weren't, but they were two young boys. Um... Anyway, so what I needed to do is I needed to get one of them to say, yes, we want you on that date, we'll pick you up at the airport. Basically, I sent her an email to, I really wanted to go to the one in Scotland, so I sent her an email first, and she ummed and ah, and was like, oh, I don't really need you that early, I thought it was going to be another couple of weeks, yada, yada, yada. So I scrapped her and sent an email to the one in Melksham, who was like, yep, yeah, we'll have you, we'll meet you at the airport. Unfortunately, then the one from Scotland came back to me and said, yeah, 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 we'll take you, and I was like, I'm sorry, it's too late now. Anyway... Push comes to shove, I end up in Melksham and it was horrible. It was the worst worst week. I was there for one week and I knew that I couldn't stay there. Worst week of my whole entire life. Um, one of the child children, child, one of the children had a, an obvious disability that the parents didn't want to acknowledge and so therefore weren't treating him for that disability. Um, yeah, and it was just, it was rotten. Made really good friends with the people, with the little old ladies in the Tourist Information Centre and they were great. They got me a ticket out of there because in the time of being over there, my other, my other family that I ended up with who were in Weaverham contacted me and said, we have a, our nanny has a medical problem. I soon later found out that she was actually pregnant um, and we need someone to come ASAP. And I said, that's fine. As long as, you know, if I can come straight away and you can pick me up at the bus depot, I'll be there because I can't stand it here. That's what it was. Um, so I sat my first pair family down and told them that I was leaving and that was it. So anyway, I ended up with, um, I'm not going to mention their names or anything, the family that I ended up with who had a little boy and a little girl, a six-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl, um, and a dog. I can mention his name. His name was Harry. Um, you know, and then there was mother and father who both worked. So... Basically, I'm up to seven minutes already. Heavens above, you guys are probably all asleep now. Anyway, basically, they were great. Um, they, mother somewhat treated me like a member of staff. Dad treated me like an older child, which is what you want to be treated like in a family like that. You want to be treated like part of the family, but yet you don't want them to mother you because they're not your mother. So, there you go. You can envision some of the conversations we had. Um... You know, but it was good. It was it was really, really good. I'll go more into, like, my experiences of pairing in another video. But, you know, it was really good. I was there for six months. Um, I looked after the kids Monday to Friday. Um, I took them to school, to pre... Well, what do they call it? School, nursery. Um, I walked Harry. And I just did nothing during the day. That's why I started my blog. I don't know if anyone ever knows this, but I started my blog because I was bored. Because... Really, mum and dad didn't care, not my mum and dad, the mum and dad of the kids that I look after didn't care about any of the things that I saw on TV or read in magazines or whatever, and I needed somewhere to sort of put my energy into that, and being like a stay-at-home mum, which is kind of what I was like, I was going a little stir-crazy being on my own, you know, Harry was great, but he didn't talk back to me when I talked to him, so it was, you know, it was a little bit pointless, um... That's why I started my blog. I tried four times to start a blog before that one. Um, and I just, you know, I couldn't get the mix of it right. I couldn't get the way I wanted it. And then when I turned 20, I thought, oh my God, life after 20. I can talk about what life is like after, you know, you turn the big 2-0. Big 2-0. People are probably rolling their eyes now. Jenny's probably rolling her eyes at me. I can, I can just see it. Anyway, um, so next video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about my pairing. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about traveling, etc. Um, I will give you one more little quick story in 30 seconds or less. When I got to the airport, the family wasn't there. I got to the airport, we were running late as it was. I walked out those gates and I could not find no one. I was having the biggest panic attack known to man. I was trying to work out how to use the international phone to call my mum and dad. God only knows what I thought they were going to do. But I was trying to call them. I was over at the lady who had the PA system. I'm going, they're not here, they're not here, they're not coming, they're not coming. And they turned up an hour and a half late. Mind you, my flight was already an hour delayed. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about anything more about them, but I'm going to be doing another video probably right now about my au pairing experience. So, I will see you soon, and until then, I'm Alex. Bye.